Amen. Uh, open up your Bibles. Exodus chapter 3. Hallelujah. Something happened to me that I've never, it's never, I've never experienced before. When I was in Argentina, I had a dream while I was, I was sleeping and it was a, a room full of people, but they were, they were great men and women of God. And uh, I was in the room and they called me to come and speak to them. So it wasn't a church. I felt like I was more like an arena. And I went up to the front and I, I got on the pulpit and I opened my Bible and I was ready to share a message with them. And then I woke up. But when I woke up, I had the whole message. I knew exactly what I was supposed to say. So I wrote it down, and I believe this is a message that God wants me to speak around the world. So this is the first time I'm able to share it in the United States, amen? I preached it several times in Argentina. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 8, actually verse 7, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel have come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Your living in this time and in this season is a miracle. You could have lived in any time. You could have lived a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago. You could have been born in another part of the world, a whole different race. You could have been, you being alive today is a miracle. Living and existing today. Nobody's here as an accident. Your, your parents might have called it an accident or, or society might have seen that, that you weren't planned, but in the plan of God, you were. Children come all sorts of ways, but there is no accident. You live now. You're breathing now. God has a reason for you to exist, amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for all that the Lord did yet hundreds of years ago, but... I'm called to this generation, I'm called to this time and this season to bring the glory of God to the, this people, amen? Hallelujah. And so, one of the things I did when, when we began as pastoring 19 years ago, I began to say this prayer, and I continue to say this prayer every week. I say, Lord, the cries, the screams, the pain, the words that you hear, of those that are crying out for mercy over this region, over this land, those that know you and that don't know you, but they're asking for some sort of help, some sort of mercy from you. Lord, those screams, those cries, what you hear, let me hear it too. And give me your power, an anointing to answer. And I could tell you, in my prayer time, or even just living, I could be walking down the street, and there are times that the Lord will put his heart inside of me for certain things that are going on in society, stuff that I don't even know about, but I, I know that, that the Lord is preparing us for going, th that, that we're going to go through it. And I find myself preparing the church. I find myself preparing my life and preparing the leadership and the, and the people. And, and during that season of preparation, next thing you know, the things 
the, the news changes, but we are ready. Like I give God praise for the time that we went through during COVID. Not one person, not one member of this church died from COVID. That's a miracle. I give God praise. There were people that, 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 that went home, but they didn't go home because of COVID. Amen. God is good. And so you notice how God said, I heard their cry and I'm choosing you, Moses, to respond that you're going to be the one that's going to take them out of slavery and into my promised land. God has not changed. He still does that. He still has heard the cry of the people and he still raises up a man or woman of God to lead people out of their slavery, out of their bondage, out of their misery and into God's plan, purpose and his promised land. And I believe you're the one. I believe that you're going to be people, you're going to be leaders of people out of their brokenness and into the glory of God. Amen. Who, who here can say, God, here I am, use me. Here I am, use me. You might look at yourself and say, I'm unqualified to be used by God. But it's not about what, what uh, you can do. It's not about your strength. It's about his strength in your life. When the prophet was before the Lord and he saw the glory of God, he said, woe is me, I'm unclean. But then the, they took a coal from the altar and touched his lips and his iniquity was removed. And after that iniquity was removed, his words changed from who am I to be, you know, woe is me, I can't be in front of a holy God. His words changed from woe is me to here I am, Lord, send me. Amen. I, I, I say this many times, you know, all God wants is your body. He needs a vessel that he could fill with his glory, that he could put his anointing upon and that he could use. Amen. So that when you speak, you don't speak in your strength, you speak in his strength. And the works that you do, it's not your works. It's the works that you first see the father do. That's the way Jesus lived. He said, the words that I say, I first heard the Father say, the, the works that I do, I first see the Father do those things. Nothing has changed. We're being led by the Holy Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit leads, we follow. As the Holy Spirit declares, we declare. As the Holy Spirit guides, we, 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 lead, we follow him. Amen? And so God is, is hearing the cries and the, and the, and the pain of society. And he responds with power by putting his anointing and his strength and his word inside your life. Amen. And he'll use you. But there are things that you need to cry out for so that you can receive. Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. And you notice how God responded to the cries. And I want to encourage you, there's four things every minister must cry out to God for. Look at your neighbor and say, you are a minister. We're not serving man, we're serving God. We are ministers unto the Lord. And everyone that has given their life to Jesus Christ, it was not just to get you to heaven, but was to put heaven in you so that wherever you go, you bring heaven to those that are lost and hurting. Amen. So you must cry out for these things. You could be a good Christian that just show up to church and sit in your, in your chair and give your tithe and, and clap when, you know, when everybody else claps and sing when everybody else sings, but yet the world does not change because God is not able to move through your life because even though you are in the church, the church is not in you. Even though you might be surrounded by people of God, you are not someone that's committed to the kingdom of God. And I'm here to tell you there's a sifting. There's a, a pulling away of the, of those that are of this world and those that are of the kingdom. You're going to have to make Make a stand and say whether I'm going to be someone of this world and, and experience the, the, the things that this world has experienced or I'm going to live in the kingdom of God. I'm going to walk with the angels. I'm going to be a saint. I'm going to be a, an instrument used by God. Amen. And so how do I know where you're at or how do you know where you're at? It's your cry. It's your cry. If all your cry is God help me. And then you get a little help and, and, and then you, you don't cry out again until, until you need something else. 
I heard this one person says, we should make a, make, make a, a shirt that says, we'll pray when, when, I'm in, when I have problems. If prayer is the only time, the only time you pray is when you have problems, you're really not praying. Hello. You know, I will preach with fire even when, it, even when I got so many problems that you can't even imagine. Because the problems don't change me. I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm, I, I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. My, my life is not my own. I've been bought with the price, the blood of Jesus. So, so my joy is not dictated according to what's happening in my life. My joy, it comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. What Jesus did for me has established my, my identity. I am the redeemed. I am a, a son of God. My name is written in heaven. And just because I'm having a bad day doesn't change that. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it doesn't change it for you. So let's get with the program. Amen. Hallelujah. How, how many of you know that tomorrow you're going you're gonna to have some needs. And then the next day you're going to have some needs. How many of you know that you're going to need provision tomorrow? There's, there's bills that need to be paid. There's, there's, there's expenses that need to be taken care of. Amen. How many of you all know that's going to happen? Amen. Hallelujah. So don't let the momentary issues stop you from being who God called you to be because if you become who God called you to be God will provide for you he will bless you your needs will be taken care of as long as you put this kingdom first all these things shall be added to your life amen hallelujah and so God wants to change your cry from God help me to these other things we're going to ask God for but you must cry out for these things if you really want to see the goodness of God and the glory of God and be used by God you must cry out for these things I'm going to give you these four you need to write these things down as wonderful as your memory is you know I, I, was, I was talking to Veronica about this I said I said honey if if you had an idea and then you forgot do you feel like you lost something like something has been lost and she said, yeah, and that's true. When I get an idea, if I don't write it down, you know, how many of you have ever had that where you had this amazing thought or this thing and you, you were, you were going to think about it more and then you forgot because you didn't write it down and since then, it's gone. So you write things down because it's a treasure. Amen. You don't want to lose treasures. You want to hold on to treasures. So write these things down. Amen. Number one. The very first thing that every minister must cry out for is for his presence, for the presence of God. In his presence is fullness of joy. The presence of the Lord must be cried out for. It must be sought after for. You must cry out for the presence of God. God will make his presence available to you, but he only responds to the cry. If you don't have a desire for the presence of God, the presence of God will not come. But one of the most incredible miracles is that every son, every child of God that's been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ, the moment that you say, Jesus, the presence of God shows up. You could be in the most difficult time in your life. You could be surrounded by trouble all around you but the moment you close your eyes and you say Jesus the presence of the Lord comes and as he comes he begins to pour out his anointing upon you he begins to restore your strength he begins to fill your heart with joy he begins to give you encouragement and strength in the midst of whatever misery you might be going through because his presence is is available to every single one of us amen the Bible says he will always be there for you that he will never leave you nor forsake you amen his presence will be there for you Every day you must be crying out, Father, I need your presence. Spirit of God, you are welcome in this place. Lord Jesus, I need you. You have to cry out for it. You have to cry out for it. You will be changed in his presence. He'll give you answers in his presence. You could be in the most difficult time in your life where it seems like all hell is against you. 
But the moment you say the name of Jesus, all heaven will be with you. The king will be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I need your presence. Hallelujah. Cry out for it. Every minister, every man of God, every woman of God, we need to cry out for his presence. And this is not a one-time cry. This is daily. This is constant. This is all the time. When temptation comes, cry out for his presence. When there's trouble, cry out for his presence. As a child, my, my parents taught me this. I was a little kid, scared. The boogeyman was underneath my bed. And I come running into my, in my parents' room, and, and, and I'm scared. Until finally, my, my dad pulled me aside, and he said, he said, Kevin, whenever you're scared, just say the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, ever since that day, when I said the name of Jesus, it was like all the light turned on. Whatever fear was going on, it left. Amen. How many of you have had that same experience when you said the name of Jesus, your whole environment changed? Amen. What happened? The presence of the Lord. So we cry out for his presence. Say, cry out for his presence. The second thing every minister must cry out, you must cry out for his power. This world is hurting. They need healing. They need deliverance. They need freedom. They need answers. You must cry out for his power, his anointing, his strength. The anointing is not so that you can minister to yourself. The, mo the anointing is so that you can minister to others. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit power upon your life that wherever you go, what is on your life will come upon their life. And whatever is broken will be healed. Whatever is missing will be provided for. You must cry out for his power. I didn't start laying hands on the sick just to lay hands on the sick as a religious experience. No, I lay hands on the sick because the Lord has anointed me to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. But it didn't just happen. I began to cry out for it. God cannot give you something that you don't ask him for. If you want to see miracles happen through your life, if you want to see God to use you to change the world and to bless others and bring healing to others, you must cry out for his power. His power will be released upon you as a response to your cry. Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. You should be crying out, Father, give me your anointing. Give me your power. Give me your strength upon my life to bring healing to others. Amen. Amen. And as you begin to cry out, step out in faith and start praying for the sick. Start ministering. Amen. Hallelujah. There are some people that say, Father, use me to cast out devils. Give me that authority to cast out devils. I'm telling you, this generation needs a lot of deliverance. They need people that can cast out devils. Amen. You cry out, Father, give me an anointing to cast out devils. And then when a the devil shows up, you run instead of casting it out. Look at your neighbor and say, man up. Be a man of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So you cry out for his power. Amen. The third, the third thing every minister must cry out for is you must cry out for his purpose. God has a purpose for every single one of you. You're not a mistake. It's not a coincidence. You've lived the life that you live. Throughout that time, God has delivered you. God has ministered to you. God has helped you from whatever you came out of. God has been faithful to pull you out of it. Amen. But then he's going to put his purpose so that he could use you to pull out others. Amen. There are there were people that ministered to you so that you could come out of whatever misery you came out of, whatever death you were operating in. There were people that preached the gospel and they prayed for you and they encouraged you along the way and they pleaded before heaven just so that your life could be redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ many of you don't even know the prayers that were prayed over you how your mom prayed over you your grandmother prayed for you your pastors prayed over you but thank God that God spoke to them and God used them to deliver you from whatever forces of the devil were sent to destroy your life 
And now God wants to use you to do the same thing for others. Lord, I need to know your purpose for my life. People come before God, God, I want to be this, I want to be this. And God says, no, you're not this. Don't come before God and say, Lord, this is my plan for me. You don't want, God will not bless your plan. He will bless his plan. And I promise you, his plan is so much greater. His plan is beyond your imagination. His plan, when you step into his plan, you'll be thinking, why would I ever want to do that other thing? I've shared this before. There are many nights that I cry while I'm asleep because I, remember, I, I see the faces and I remember the glorious things that I've seen God do around the world through my life. How people have been healed. How people who were on their deathbed and God raised them up. How women who could not have children now have children. All because God sent me there to release his anointing upon them so they could be healed. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. Amen. That's why I live for. I don't live for money. I don't live for prestige. I don't live for anything that the world has to offer. I'm, I'm running the race that's set before me. I'm living out the purpose of God in my life. I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to go without fulfilling the plan and purpose for my life. Amen. If you say, Pastor, you're going to retire, I'm going to retire in heaven. As long as I have a voice and I have hands to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to serve the Lord, amen? And when my work is done, I go home. Oh, you should retire and have this and this and this. What? As beautiful as you think that is here on earth, it doesn't compare to what God has for me in heaven. I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing, I'm doing this for the Lord. And as I do it for the Lord, the Lord blesses me with everything I Anybody could want, amen. Hallelujah. I mean, my, my, my greatest blessing is my wife, Veronica. I mean, you can't buy that. How many years? 31? 31 years we've been married. We got married when we were 12 years old, and... <laughs> amen. Say his purpose. Say, Father, show me your purpose for my life in Jesus' name. You must cry that, cry out for that. Cry out for it, amen. And let me just give you a little secret. When, whenever God speaks to you, write it down. Write it down. Keep it before you, amen. Hallelujah. The fourth thing and the last thing, and to tell you the truth, this is probably the, the most important the fourth thing, every minister, that's you, that's me. I'm not talking to people that are preachers right now. I'm talking to those that will be preachers. Amen. I'm talking to both, really. But the fourth thing, the last thing, is his grace. His grace. And I'm not just talking about his grace to get saved. I'm talking about his grace to begin and to finish strong. In Hebrews 12, verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God, at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen? And so we need his grace not just to begin, but to stay strong and to finish the race. There are many people that have been used mightily for God, Serve the Lord in ways that are beyond our imagination. Had God had a great plan and purpose for their life. But the enemy came and did something that put temptation and put, some, put, a, put a thorn in the flesh that next thing you know, instead of them living out their life as a good testimony, they had a stumble along the way, that, that stumble along the way, instead of people thinking about all the wonderful things that the Lord has done through their life, they look at their life and say, that man must have been fake or maybe maybe god chose the wrong person understand our ministry is not about ourselves our ministry is all about god but we're the vessel that we have to keep ourselves so that people can receive 
It's a sacrifice of love to keep ourselves walking in the beauty of holiness and righteousness so that those that come, they don't see the sin, they see the glory of God. They see Jesus. And it takes a grace because as you, be, as you start serving the Lord, people will, will want to, to see God do things through your life. And next thing you know, they're trying to honor you and, and thank God for that honor. But all glory belongs to God. All glory belongs to God. When anyone blesses me, I receive it in the love of God and I thank God for that. But I recognize that they're not, they're not, they're not giving to me. They're giving to the Jesus in me. And when they ask for prayer, they're not asking prayer from Kevin. They're asking for prayer from Jesus in Kevin. Amen. And so I need his anointing. I need his grace so that I can start what, what God has started, that I will finish strong. Yeah. Amen. And it's beyond the, the ability of man. It's beyond your ability that when temptation comes, it's beyond your ability to resist every single time. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. The one that called us will keep us. Amen. That whenever the enemy tries to put a snare, the, the Holy Spirit will show us what's happening. And the Bible says that in every temptation, God will provide a way out. So that when the things of yesterday, the things that your flesh indulged in yesterday, but you're a new man in Christ Jesus. The Spirit of God will be there to remind you who you are. So you could tell the flesh, no, this body is not my own. It belongs to the Lord. It is a temple of the Holy Ghost. This temptation, it, it's a momentary, it's a moment. And I'm not going to risk the future and the plan and the purpose that God has for my life for one moment of, of weakness. Somebody shout no. no. I wasn't convinced. Somebody shout no. no. When, the, when, when drugs try to be temptation. No! My body's not for drugs. Perversions try to come in. No! I'm a man of God. God has made me holy. The spirit of the most high God lives on the inside of me. I'm a temple of the Holy Ghost. This, this life belongs to the Lord. I'm not living for Kevin. I'm living for the Lord. Kevin's a dead man. Those, those are old ways. Those are dead things. They are not my ways no more. Amen. Like the devil should be scared to try to tempt you. Like he tries to bring a temptation, like an old friend shows up and says, hey, listen, I got these things, you know, you want to be, remember we used to do this? Shut up. What? Hey, what, what, what's your problem? No, shut up, that ain't me. That ain't me. Matter of fact, you need deliverance, bro. Aren't you tired of surrendering all your money to some drug that has no value other than five minutes? But at the end of it, it's going to cause you to, to want to kill yourself. Why don't you die to who you are and live for God? There's freedom in the name of Jesus. He set me free and he can set you free too. That'll be the last time that guy ever tries to tempt you with that. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because darkness runs away from the light. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let, let me hear you shout no again. No! Oh, I, I believe that one. I believe that one. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the same God that saved you, the same Jesus that saved you, is the same Jesus that will keep you. That's why we look unto him. When we are weak, he is strong. When we need help, we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And you'll see that temptation, it will begin to go down, down, down. Next thing you know, it's no longer a temptation. Matter of fact, you'll begin to detest, detest those things because you'll see the brokenness in the lives. And you will remember that those things cause you to want to kill yourself and, and all the problems that it brought to your life. But thank God for his saving power. He's good, amen. You must cry out for his grace. And you say, well, pastor, how many times do I have to cry out? Daily. All the time. I need his grace. And he gets all the glory. 
Amen. How many can, how many can honestly say the Lord has kept you? That God is the one that has kept you strong. That God is the one that delivered. That God's grace has been faithful. Amen. His grace is more than just to save you to go into the next, into the, into the kingdom. But it's to keep you in the kingdom. Serving the Lord. Amen. You must cry out for his grace. And I prophesy over your life today that the Lord who has begun a thing in your life, a good work, will complete that work. Amen. That at the end of your life, the Lord will get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. That when people hear your name, they will remember the Lord Jesus Christ and how he's changed you, how he saved you, and how he used you to be a blessing to others. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you all receive that today? Amen. Can we give God the highest praise? Amen.